The floor is good enough for strangers, isn't it? Of course. Oh, you can use this cardboard if you like. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law looked at me and smiled wickedly. Today is a housewarming party at my parents-in-law's house. What awaited my mother and me was their insidious harassment. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law have always hated me. They came to harass me alone, and eventually started harassing my mother as well. Just because they don't like me doesn't mean they can't harass my mother. This is unforgivable. Why do they do this? Just as I was about to get angry, one person's words changed the whole situation. My name is Kirsten. I am 30 years old. I live with my husband Stuart and our almost three-year-old daughter Lisa. I have known Stuart since we were in college, and we got married in our second year of working together. After that, we had Lisa, and we are now living a happy life together. The apartment we are living in now. It's the same one we lived in before we got married, so now that our daughter has grown up, it feels a bit cramped. So recently, Stuart and I have been talking more about moving. Just the other day, we were talking about getting a new apartment nearby. We're all getting older, and it's time to move into a bigger place. I nodded broadly at my husband's remarks. You're right. Lisa has recently started asking for her own room too. Maybe we should seriously think about moving. Right. Maybe we should go to an information session about a new apartment building. Yeah, let's do that. I hear it's a nice place with a big layout. Thus, we began to move our preparations for our move. We attended an information meeting about condominiums and finalized our plans, taking into consideration things like the possibility of more children. Then one day. My father-in-law called me to see Lisa, and we went to see him for the first time in a long time. I didn't want to go, but since he asked me, I had no choice but to go. Why don't I want to visit my in-laws? You ask. It's because of my husband's family structure. My father-in-law, mother-in-law, and sister-in-law lives in the house. My father-in-law Harry is a quiet and gentle man who takes good care of Lisa. But my mother-in-law Tracy and sister-in-law Morgan have one or two quirks that I don't like. It's not that I don't like them; it's just that I don't get along with them. I guess they think the same of me. From the very beginning of our marriage, they never wanted to have anything to do with me. They don't harass me, but whenever I visit them, they look at me weirdly and whisper, call me paranoid. But I wasn't fond of them because of their attitude. However, they never spoke to me. The only thing that saved me was the minimal amount of conversation we had. But this day was different. My mother-in-law, who normally doesn't talk to me at all, came up to me with a happy look on her face. Kristen, listen, we're trying to build a new house. What? Really? I was a little surprised because this is the first time I heard of this. You see. My father owns a lot of real estate, right? He inherited a lot from his grandfather's generation. This house is getting old, so we decided to rebuild it. I didn't know that. That's nice, isn't it? But my husband doesn't like the idea. Oh, I know. Let's have your family live here with us. What? Us? Yes. I'm sure my husband will be very generous with his money. If you and Lisa move in with us, my face involuntarily scrunched up from the idea of living together with this family. Then my sister-in-law, who was listening to the conversation, interrupted and started to get in on the fun. That's a good idea. Stuart told me you guys were thinking of moving, right? Then just move in with us. But if you want to raise children. A house is definitely better than an apartment. You don't have to worry about the next room when they make noise, and we have the manpower. That might be true, but right? Yeah. Then it's settled. Dad, Christian's family is moving into the new house with us. Well, Morgan, I'm not sure. I'm quite sure yet. 
Then my father-in-law heard what my sister-in-law said, and his eye lit up, and he had a happy expression on his face. Really? If I get to live with the lovely Lisa, my father-in-law's reaction made it impossible for me to say no to him. For some reason, the conversation proceeded as if we were going to live together, and my mother-in-law and sister-in-law happily began to decide on the floor plan. I called out to my husband, who was playing with my daughter. Hey, Stuart, we're talking about moving in together. Well, didn't you agree to my sister's proposal? I didn't agree to it. It kind of just happened, and your dad seemed so happy about it that I just couldn't say no. But you know what? It's not that bad, right? We're just thinking about moving, and we got lucky. Do we get to live in the new house? That's true, but right? Don't you think it would be nice if we all lived together? Dad would be happy to live with Lisa. I couldn't be happy to live with them from the bottom of my heart, but my husband has a point. My father-in-law has loved me like a real daughter ever since we got married. Wouldn't it be better for my daughter to live in an environment with her grandparents? However, I wonder if it's okay to make a decision to move in together in such a casual manner. What if something goes wrong after we start living together? I couldn't help but feel uneasy when I thought about it. The conversation was progressing in the direction of moving in together, and I was no longer in a position to intervene. My husband got into the groove and started deciding on the floor plan. My father-in-law was not too keen on the idea of rebuilding, but he was so happy to be able to live with his granddaughter that he repeatedly said, "I'm looking forward to it." Even Lisa said, "We can live with Grandpa." She sounded happy. There was no way I could say no at this point, so we decided to make the move. That night, after I put our daughter to bed, I complained to my husband, who was drinking a beer. Stuart, are we really going to move in with them? Shouldn't we think this through? Why are you saying this now? Dad looks so happy. It's a great idea. It's good for him, maybe, but are you saying you can't do it now? It's going to make it harder for you to visit my parents. But it's okay, Kristen. I'm here for you if you need help. I was so taken in by my husband's words. That I decided to move in with his parents. Soon, my fears became reality. A few months later, the reconstruction of my parents-in-law's house started. The original house was to be torn down, and a new house was to be built there, so my parents-in-law would be temporarily without a place to live. My father-in-law rented a monthly apartment near his workplace, and my mother-in-law and sister-in-law moved into our little apartment. I was told this three days before they were to move. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law moved in one by one without regard to my schedule. Kristen, make me coffee. My unreserved mother-in-law's request made me furrow my brow. I'm sorry, Tracy. It's already time to drop Lisa at daycare. What? You can't listen to your mother-in-law? No, it's not that. Just when I was getting upset by my mother-in-law's pressure, my sister-in-law threw a tantrum. You know, Kirstine, we're going to let you live in that house after the rebuilding is finished, so you should be more grateful to us. But I don't have time. You can be a little late to take care, can't you? Make me a cup of tea too. I can't. I also have to go to work. Shut up. Do as you're told. If you don't, I won't let you live in our house. I had no choice but to put my bag down and start preparing tea, as I was told. Tracy and Morgan are grinning and laughing like fools. Why am I in this situation? They never say such unreasonable things when Stuart is around. What am I supposed to do now that my schedule is all screwed up? Is this going to be my life forever if I move in with them? I can't stand it. However, I don't have the courage to rebel against my mother-in-law and our family. 
I was miserable at being at their mercy. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law do not work and are always at home. I couldn't find the right time to talk to my husband about it. I was running out of patience with the daily torment. Then one day, I was on my way to pick up Lisa from work when I received a phone call from my mother. Hello, Kristen. Are you? Mom. Hey, what's up? You don't seem well. I've had it up to here, so I told my mother how frustrated I am. She heard me out, and then she said quietly, "Kristen, you need to tell Stuart these kind of things. But the house will be built soon. You haven't started living together yet. Why don't you go show Lisa's face to her grandpa for once?" Yeah. Okay. I'll talk to Stuart. With my mother's encouragement, I decided to tell my husband how I felt. I can't talk to him at home because my mother-in-law and sister-in-law are there, so I make a phone call right then and there. My husband had just left the office and asked me quickly what's wrong. I decided to get right to the point. I can't live with your family after all. What? What's wrong? What are you talking about? I'm being harassed by your mother and sister. What? When you are not looking, they've been harassing me. They cause me so much stress. I can't live with them. Hey, come down. They should both at home right now, so we'll figure this out when the house is finished. Okay? Okay. My parents-in-law's house is almost finished. I had no choice but to be patient until then. A few months later, the house was handed over to my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. Who returned to their new home at that time? Today, they've invited us to their house for a housewarming party. Unfortunately, my husband is at work. My daughter is at daycare, so I'm the only one who can go since I'm off work. I don't know what kind of repercussions I'll face if I refuse. I was worried about going there alone, so I called my mother and asked her to come with me. When I met up with my mother and headed for the party. I found that the exterior of the house had been changed from the old house to somehow to something more modern. When I pressed the intercom, my father-in-law greeted me with a big smile on his face. His kindness eased my anxiety a little, but my relief was short-lived. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law smiled wonderfully when they saw me. Oh, look! It's the no-good wife, Kristen. Oh yeah. And today she brought her mom along. Is your mom a no good wife too? My mother and I were mortified by their words. My father-in-law shouted, "How dare you!" But the girls continued relentlessly. Kirsten, I'm sorry, but we don't need you anymore. We only asked you to move in with us because we wanted a new home. And yes, we knew my dad would be thrilled to have you and his grandchild move in with him. And we knew he would be thrilled to get you a new place to live. Well, why don't you sit down anyway? The floor is good enough for strangers, isn't it? Of course. You can use this cardboard if you want. They said that, and threw a piece of cardboard at my mother and me. There was a moment. I opened my mouth quietly, desperately restraining my trembling body. From exploding with anger that I had been keeping under wraps, how dare you do this? I can't allow this to happen, no matter how much it costs. But the two of them were smiling and looking at me. How can I let my anger get through to these people? Then, in the next moment, you strangers, please get out of my house. My father-in-law said in a calm tone. At his words, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law said. That's right. Get out! They chimed in. My father-in-law's eyes widened and he yelled at them. Don't play with me. I'm talking about you, strangers. What? Dad, what kind of jack is this? Stuart told me that you both have been harassing Kristen, but I didn't think it would go this far. What's with your attitude when Kristen let you stay in her home until this house was built? Don't you feel any shame in doing such a stupid thing? You—you are misunderstanding. That's right, Dad. 
Mom and I have been training Kristen to be better wife. Shut up! You two can't even do your own housework. How can you be so stupid as to invite Kristen to live with us and use her to build this house? I get my permission for a new house so that we could all live together happily. The smile on my mother-in-law's and sister-in-law's faces disappeared at the sight of my father-in-law's delvish expression. They were speechless, and my father-in-law shouted at them, "You are no longer family. I own this house, and I want you out of here." The girls turned and ran to me. They bowed down to my mother, and began to plead with me in a deliberate manner. Kristen, do something about this. Yeah, if you don't do something, he'll throw me and my mom out. What are you talking about now? In response to my coldness, they began to explain. Please, convince him. Tell him that we should all live in together. If my dad gets any angrier, he won't be able to take it back, will he? Hurry up! Even after all this time, they still haven't apologized to me. I looked at my mother and thought it was ridiculous that I had to put up with this for so long. Now I have my father-in-law on my side. I had nothing to fear anymore, and I told them both in no uncertain terms. Cut the crap! You've been picking on me all this time. You want me to help you when things get bad? Are you kidding me? Why should I do anything you tell me to do? Kirsten, calm down. Shut up. Do you have any idea how much pain you people have caused me? How can I forgive you for taking advantage of me? And treating my mother like this, I'm cutting all ties with you. I have no duty to help a stranger. I will not live with you, scum, and I will not have anything to do with you ever again. If you understand, get out of my sight right now. Overwhelmed by my words, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law slumped to the ground. They were kicked out of the house by my husband, who flew home after receiving a call from my father-in-law. Afterwards. My father-in-law and mother-in-law divorced. My mother-in-law refused to divorce, but it was discovered that my mother-in-law had been spending my father-in-law's savings with, without his permission. She was told by my father-in-law that if she didn't divorce him, he would sue her. So she reluctantly agreed to do so. My sister-in-law, who had never worked before, was forced to take this opportunity to work. After they were kicked out of the house. They had to live in a cheap apartment, but they had to work to make ends meet, so they were now desperately trying to get part-time jobs. I, on the other hand, have lost the reason for refusing to live with them now that my mother-in-law and sister-in-law are gone. My father-in-law said that the house was too big for one person to live alone, so my family moved in with my father-in-law in the new house. I feel sorry for my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. Who were kicked out, but I guess they deserved it. I don't know how my father-in-law could have tolerated that kind of behavior in the first place, but thanks to that, we live happily now. I want to spend time with my father-in-law, who loves my daughter, in a big, beautiful house, and I want to spend time with everyone 